Hello everyone, I'm Dani and welcome to our podcast. Today, Great.com talks with Rick Cole, the Executive Director of Congress for the New Urbanism. If you haven't heard about it, they are an organization that champions walkable urbanism with three main goals, to diversify neighborhoods, to design for climate change, and to legalize walkable places. If you're new here to this podcast, remember to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app. Hi, Rick. Welcome. Great to be on the show with you. Oh, truly, our pleasure. I love to talk about this subject, something that I'm very, very interested in, especially when it comes to think of climate change and daily life, mm -hmm. because urbanism, at the end of the day, it's truly about our daily actions, how we go to work, how we live, the mm -hmm. types of houses we're living in. And in that, we take on society as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it would be nice if we could start talking about not just the relations between climate change and urbanism, but also think, take in on inequality. Because I feel like uh, I heard this sentence, this phrase uh, a few days ago, that it was like climate change without considering uh, inequality is just gardening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just building your own garden. And I loved it. So please uh, enlighten us a, a little bit about that. Tell us about those relations and how they are all connected and they actually impact on each other. D Daniel, in the long arc of human history, um, particularly the last 10,000 years, um, where we've built human habitations uh, that grew into cities um, and that today uh, encompass more than half of the world's population and, and soon two-thirds of the world's population. How we live has far more impact on our lives uh, than we realize. The, the places we inhabit, and not just the, the, the inside of, of our apartment or our, or our home, but also the immediate surroundings and the way in which those surroundings are connected uh, to other places have profound effect on our physical health, our mental health, uh, our well-being, our happiness. But they also have a huge impact at a global scale because there's over seven and a half billion of us now. And again, uh, soon two thirds of, of that human population are gonna live in cities. So how cities are shaped uh, has profound impact. And the two existential threats to human civilization uh, today are climate change. We, we're, it's not something that's coming, it's something that's already here and getting worse. And inequality. Uh, there's always been uh, forms of inequality in human society, uh, but now the, the, re, the shifting of extraordinary resources, uh, not just of, of money and wealth, but of all the power that comes with money and wealth. And that is also uh, misshaping our cities. So we have uh, what, what one author calls a planet of slums, uh, a population of people living in, in, in misery, almost as large as the population of the world when I was born. Um, and then we have uh, a shrinking group of people who have extraordinary wealth. And this, the inequality uh, is mirrored in carbon emissions. Uh, the people that are jet setting around the world that have a 300 foot yachts uh, have a gigantic carbon footprint. Uh, whereas people um, living on the margins of our society uh, have a teeny uh, carbon footprint. Uh, so when we think about the impacts of climate change, they're gonna fall most heavily on the people who have made the least contribution to the crisis, um, the most vulnerable. So that's why um, our organization is focused on climate and equity. We view them as interrelated challenges. We believe that the way we've built cities over the last 75 years in Brazil, in America, uh, across all the continents, has, is increasingly the same and it's increasingly wrong. We've built around cars instead of around human beings. We've turned our back on 5,000 years of, of timeless principles about how to live in harmony with nature, uh, without air conditioning, without electricity, without, um, without electric power. Um, and, and now we are going to need 
to um, adapt those principles. We're, we're not, we don't advocate going back to 100 years ago or 500 years ago. We advocate going forward in a responsible, sustainable, and equitable way. Well, um, I, as you were speaking, I kept thinking about Brazil's history and thinking how our cities were built and there is this moment in history that we, I think most history lessons here touch on that point that uh, the major cities were truly created for cars. They were sort of funded by this oil big companies and by uh, well, anyone that wanted to make money on it, honestly. And it, it's true when you think about like, major cities and small cities and you look at the difference and look at the amount of the, the trees that they have, the amount of uh, walking spaces. This is something that truly really bothers me here. The fact that we need cars, we need to, you know, we need to enhance our carbon footprint, footprint to get to places. And that's insane. Paradoxically, um, the most dense cities actually are the least polluting. Sometimes it feels the opposite. Sometimes it feels mm -hmm. like um, the uh, countryside is uh, is a place where where you are making the least impact uh, on nature and, and on our atmosphere. But in fact, um, if living in the countryside involves being uh, dependent upon the car and not having access to public transit, your carbon footprint is actually going to be much greater and your impact um, on nature is going to be more maleficent. So the it's really important to humanize our big cities, um, to take advantage of the fact um, that they're that, that they could be at a human scale. Uh, the mayor of Paris has popularized this idea of the 15 minute city um, that within a 15 minute walk or bike ride uh, or public transit uh, ride of, of your home, the vast majority of your human needs could be met. Maybe you wouldn't be able to go to the opera in your neighborhood. We wouldn't be able to go to um, a World Cup soccer game in your neighborhood. Um, but you would be able to, to shop, to eat, um, to socialize, uh, to have access to, to cultural activities. Um, and, and then you wouldn't have to get in your car. Uh, in America, you, you pretty much have to get in your car in the vast majority of, of our cities and towns. Uh, to go get a, a gallon of milk. Um, you, have to, you have to fire up your engine and, and drive out onto the highway uh, just, just for your absolute uh, minimum daily needs. That is not sustainable. And, and there was a great American economist who said, things which can't go on forever do not. And, and we're reaching the end of the road. Uh, we're seeing increasing social, environmental, and in economic uh, catastrophic costs. Um, and, and so we are going to have to change. And um, we think it can be a change for the better. Uh, we believe that if we build our cities intentionally, if we draw upon the last 5,000 years of how people built, they built for human beings uh, because we didn't have access to, to automobiles. Automobiles are not evil, um, but building cities around automobiles instead of around people, that is evil. And it's had an evil impact um, on our environment, on our economy, and on our society. So we need to get back in balance. We need to um, be the masters of technology rather than letting technology um, be our masters. 45,000 people um, are slaughtered on our highways um, every year in America. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the, of the cost of being dependent uh, upon a car. And in that context, what has been the work of the new urbanism movement and you know the congress as well i'm glad you asked um we began 30 years ago with a very small group of architects who were contrarians they they said that um building bigger and bigger freeways um wiping out uh the historic uh, neighborhoods uh, sprawling out into the countryside instead of um, taking care of our existing cities and towns, that that was wrong, that that was leading to racial and economic segregation, that it was leading to uh, greater pollution and damage to the environment, that we were losing some of our 
historic heritage uh, of, of great, great neighborhoods and, and great towns and great cities, and that uh, we need to reverse course. At the time, that was wildly unpopular um, because people still were, uh, had this idea that we could continue to build uh, a suburban uh, utopia. Not unlike uh, when the Brazilians decided to um, to build Brasilia, uh, that you, by starting from scratch, it would be so much better uh, than taking care of the places um, that, that had grown up over um, decades or, or hundreds of years. So uh, there's there's a saying um, that uh, when, when you come up with an unpopular idea, first they try to ignore you, uh, then they ridicule you. Uh, then they attack you, uh, and then you win, uh, and then they take credit for um, for the ideas. And that's pretty much been the cycle over the last three decades in America. Now, um, the major architectural organizations, uh, planning organizations, um, even many of the politicians, they all say, "Oh, well, we 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 love the idea of of uh, walkable cities. Uh, we love the idea of of um, having cities that are." That are compact and environmentally sustainable. Uh, that that's completely uh, logical. The trouble is that they now talk a good game, but but the inertia continues out um, the unsustainable pattern uh, that's financed by Wall Street. Um, that is the only thing you can build under under our uh, obsolete laws that were designed to to create a different kind of of auto oriented. Um, development, and we, we're about to spend a trillion dollars in America, and much of it is to building roads, not to fix the roads we have, but to making them bigger and wider. And we already know that that's lunacy. Uh, that not only does it not help traffic, it actually generates more traffic because the people who didn't used to want to drive um, that much further because it would take forever, they say, "Oh, now it's gotten a little bit better. Now I will take a job that's ten miles further away, or I'll go." Um, to the movies five miles um, further away, and you end up actually with more traffic, more pollution, and you've spent billions of dollars um, to make the problem worse. So that's, that's our organization is dedicated to turning the tide on that. Um, we, we are absolutely committed to doing it in a way um, that, that includes people from all different um, political viewpoints. Is not a political issue, although it goes to the heart of, of democracy. Um, it's, it's an issue about, do you care about people? And if you care about people, let's make cities and towns that make people healthier, um, make, uh, don't exact such an economic cost uh, of having to, to own a car or two cars and gas them up with increasingly uh, costly prices. Let's build cities that, that work for people, work for everyone. I love this perspective and it's something that is so necessary in, in my point of view, because, you know, I, I feel that that's the only way possible to the future, like to keep living in cities and without taking too much from nature. And again, thinking about the economic impact that all those things have. So we need to consider all those, those points. And uh, could you walk us through a little bit about the programs that you have running in the Congress, especially the one that I, I loved it, that is the Highways to Boulevards movement. I sure. love that idea. You know, at the heart of, of our movement um, is a charter. And the, the charter talks about the neighborhood, the city, um, and the, I'm sorry, the street, the neighborhood, and the region, um, which are the, the components uh, parts. We often, we often think about the political jurisdictions, um, but it's really your street that is where things start. And then it's, um, then it's your neighborhood, how the pieces are put together in that 15-minute neighborhood that has not just places for people to live, but people to eat out and to see each other and parks and all of that. Um, and then there's the region, right? Because um, uh, different political boundaries have nothing to do with how air circulates, um, etc. So, the the programs that we focus on are to change the way we we build at the very basic, which is the street. And we have in America, and we've exported all over the world, 
um, we we have jumped on this bandwagon of making everything about how fast and how uh, convenient can we make it for you to drive. So people literally in America um, to fight this epidemic of obesity get in their car to drive to the gym to get on a treadmill um, instead of being able to walk out of their front door and naturally get exercise because um, it's the healthy thing to do. So the Highways to Boulevards um, program uh, recognizes that we made a terrible mistake in building urban freeways. We, we demolished the homes of a million people. We uprooted the lives of a million people. And those, um, those freeways are now uh, coming to their, the end of their useful life. And many of them are literally falling down. And we're saying, well, let's not build them back up. Let's not build them back up bigger. Let's tear them down and actually return them uh, to streets. So that's one of our programs. Um, we're also trying to change the codes. Many of the laws in America um, require uh, things that, that are designed around cars. For example, part of the cost of housing uh, is demanding that we build these big garages, uh, oftentimes underground in cities, that can add as much as 40% to the cost of, of uh, building a new uh, apartment or, or condominium. That makes no sense. Um, we, we should offer people um, alternatives to having to own a car, drive a car, be addicted to a car. Um, I've talked a lot about cars. We also talk a lot about um, the, the public realm, right? The public realm is, should be rich and varied and spontaneous. It doesn't have to be um, uh, paved with, with gold, but simply having ample sidewalks with nice trees uh, and doors and windows that um, that open up onto the sidewalk or maybe are set back or stepped up if it's a, a semi-private use like, like someone's home. That's what has created great places all over the world for hundreds of years that we all spend a great deal of money to go visit and spend time in when we're on vacation. And then we go back and say, oh, well, I've got to get in my car and drive from my suburban house, you know, uh, an hour and a half um, both ways uh, for, for my job. Th that's crazy. Um, it's unsustainable. And we know how to do better. And so we need to change the laws to allow that to happen. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I just want to tell people to go to your website, that is cnu.org, that where it, you can get more information on that and see more of the projects the resources section that you have, I loved it as well, where we can, we that don't know much about it can learn more. And you also have some tools there for those who are interested in doing more on that as a job or something to work on that section. And unfortunately, we're getting to the end of our interview here today. And my last question for you is, how can people get involved both to help you and also to be part of the Congress? There are a couple of ways. Um, the first is, of course, uh, to join our organization so we um, can be in touch with you on a regular basis. Um, we have an annual Congress um, that draws people from all over the country and, frankly, from all over the world of uh, meeting together uh, around ideas. And we call it a Congress instead of a conference because it's not just to come and listen to people uh, give talks and show pictures of, of better ways of building. We have some of that. But it's really to come together to decide together what are the most important issues we should be working on. And as I mentioned earlier, for us in this moment, the most important issues are climate and equity. Um, we can build towns and cities that are um, much better for um, democracy and, and for people living together and, and supporting each other versus being segregated um, in ways that, that are, I think, unsustainable for democracy. And we can also live much more in harmony with nature. So figuring out how to do that, that's what we do together. Um, everyone is welcome who wants to see better cities and better towns. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I love this talk. And for everyone listening as well, thank you. And if you enjoyed this episode, remember to press subscribe on YouTube.
or in a podcast app, because that shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation and more people can learn about the importance of the new Urbanism Congress. Again, thank you so much, Rick. I learned so much today. I love when we actually get to talk more about these issues. So everyone, see you at the next episode. Bye-bye.